Hi everyone and welcome. I'm Diane and my passion is painting and creating nature-inspired watercolours in my studio, which are easy for you to do too. I share all my paintings with you on YouTube and on our website, dianeanton.com, you can find free downloadable sketches for all the videos to help you make the most of your painting journey. And if you'd like a little bit more, we also have channel memberships with loads of perks for you to enjoy. So welcome on board, click subscribe and turn on notifications and let's learn to paint watercolour. Hi everyone, Diane here, welcome to my studio. Um, today I'm going to paint uh, for the relaxation. I'm going to paint some uh, leaves and flowers on this piece of paper here. This is a sheet of Etcher watercolour paper, 140 pound cold press uh, wood pulp paper in a block, so glued all the way around as usual and uh, just with the gap that you can separate it from the sheets below. Um, and what I'm going to do today, I'm going to use, I think I'm going to use my, um, uh, the, the Paul Rubens artists set here. I have no affiliation with Paul Rubens, by the way. I don't um, earn anything. If you happen to buy their set, that's, uh, that's uh, nothing to do with me, but um, they sent them to me and I think I should use them um, you know, because I'm a nice person. So what I'm going to do though, I'm going to start off by painting the leaves on this um, painting. Rather than starting with the flowers and then putting the leaves in, I'm going to start with the leaves and then put the flowers in. How about that for a thought? Then we might have to come back and put in a few more leaves. And um, oh yes, I wanted to show you this actually. This here is a water container from Meaden. Uh, I don't want to tip it too far because I put water in it. Um, and it's ceramic, like their palettes, and it's about the size of a large jam jar. Uh, two of them joined together, so one for rinsing and one for picking up clean water. And it's rather nice, it's quite stylish. It sort of looks uh, quite nice on the table there. I usually use those um, jam jars over there, but uh, I thought I'd give this a a world today. You can get those, link in the description below if you want to buy them. They're not expensive, they're quite fun. Make a nice present actually for an artist because most people most likely wouldn't um, wouldn't buy something like that for themselves. So I'm going to use olive green dark to start with and I'm just going to literally, I'm going to literally dive in with some um, shapes. And I'm going to relax and take my time and not worry about whether or not lunch is going to be late today because I've only just started painting and it's 20 past 12 already. So, you know, whatever. So I might have to turn my paper around from time to time. So you have to bear with me for that too. And we don't want these um, leaf shapes to be too perfect and they certainly won't be when it's me what's doing it. Um, yeah, so let's turn the whole thing around the other way and uh, I'll put one going in this way. I'm not even gonna look at what I've already done. So we'll just plop them in, plop, plop, ploppity plop. There we are. It's an absolutely beautiful summer's day. I've been waiting for this. Um, today and uh, birds are singing and everybody's happy and cheerful and all the rest of it. So that's nice. I'm going to add a little bit of brown umber to this green so that we get a slightly darker one. And see how that's darker and the brown umber is quite nice as a darkening thing. I used it yesterday mixed with uh, turquoise and that's, that makes a nice colour too, a sort of greyish green. Perhaps I'll do some of that in a sec. Quite nice to put the leaves on first, isn't it? You see what I mean? We've put one over here. I'm using a Princeton um, Aqua Elite brush. Uh, these, these are quite nice brushes. They've got quite nice points. Nothing worse than a pointless brush, is there? Uh -huh. And uh, let's put one going this way. Just added a little bit more. 
of the, I'm going to do, do them a little bit more like this. I did a bit more of the brown umber there. Okay. And then I think probably if we do one over here as well. Whoops. Having just spoken highly of the brushes, decided to take me by surprise, but there we go. Then if you want, you can come back with your darker color and you can put in some veins using the very point, the very tip of the brush. Because by the time you've done the other leaves and come back, these ones are dry enough to be able to put in the center veins. I watched a video yesterday, this morning, um, by Jenna Rainey and her, her boyfriend or husband rather, um, saying, telling people what they can do with their old paintings. Um, and uh, yeah, why am I mentioning that? Because it's like there's a tendency to make a problem out of something that isn't really a problem, isn't there? You know, why is it a problem if you've got lots of paintings that you've done before? So, so what? <laughs> I've just been in my husband's um, workshop and it's like, oh my God, if you died tomorrow, I would never know, I what would I do with all this stuff? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what any of it is. None of it. I have no idea what any of it is for. And there's just a lot of it. <laughs> Since he retired, he seems to have been accumulating electrical and mechanical and so on equipment like there's no tomorrow, it's quite funny. Right, so I've rinsed out my brush in one half of my container and I'm gonna pick up some clean uh, water in the other half of my container. And then I'm going to pick up some quinacridone violet, which doesn't sound very appropriate name, but that's what it says it is. And then I'm going to put in some flowers over here. There is a fly buzzing around. Go away. <laughs> oh, now it's on my glasses. You know, those annoying little... things. No, it's not exactly a mosquito. What do we call them? Midges, I think we call them midges. So if we're going to do an all over pattern, which is what this is probably going to turn out to be, um, you, you're going to take each color one at a time, really, and um, put that on and then swap to another color. Like for example, uh, pink. Let's see, what have we got here? What's that? This looks like a red. I think I might want to put a bit of, eh, well, that'll do. Um, and make these ones perhaps a little bit bigger. That's fairly evenly spread, isn't it? And my blobs are literally blobs. And then let's have some blue. Sorry. Let's have some 
Berlin blue, maybe? Something like this. Just making little collections of blueness. I'll put some up here, perhaps. Okay. And then think I'm going to try the, the what did I say the transparent turquoise with I'm not sure if you can see that the transparent turquoise with the burnt umber which is going to give us the brown umber rather and give us this interesting shade of green nice green. It's not always easy to achieve these more subtle colours. Right, and then some of these, I think I'm going to use the same colour. And just put, ooh, you have to be careful not to touch anything. Put some longer leaves there just by way of a change. Let's, let's think, first of all, about putting some darker centres in these ones. I suppose everyone's starting to think about summer holidays, aren't they? Let's put some dark purple in there too for the centres. I don't know why not. Purple. 
that will blend in. And then some of the same. Perhaps we'll mix that with a bit of the brown amber as well to make a really dark purple for the centre there. So that is dark sazine violet and brown umber mixed together. And that's going to give us a really dark colour that we can use to put the veins in these leaves if we want to. If we feel we can control our shaky hands enough. Okay, and then we need leaves. Oops, need a bit more water there. need leaves for these ones here. I'm going to do this dark blue. And of course, guess what? We will be coming in with pen pull this whole thing together. Because I've decided that that's a little bit my signature style. You have to have a style, you know. I've just ordered some more of those uh, Tombow uh, brush pen thingies. Oh, I forgot that one, didn't I? Because mine are drying out. They do, sadly, eventually need to be replaced. I think we just want a little bit more red here, maybe here and here. You could put yellow in if you wanted to for the centres, but I, I don't know, I think the dark colour for this one is probably more appropriate. I don't know, they're starting to, to look a bit like poppies, aren't they? Although I didn't really have that in mind. Okay, and then the other thing that I do like to put in is some berries, some circles. You can use those to fill in any of the gaps. Oh, my hand is hurting. I'm going to put the stems in with um, with a pen because that will be a little bit easier for me. Just turn that round. Don't let me forget. Okay, right. And now the relaxing part for me is, first of all, let my hand relax because it's going numb. 
We find the um, the pen. Now, is this the right one? Because one of them is a bit. Yeah, that one's died. Die and go to heaven. Goodbye. So we want the other one, which is here. Yes. Let's go move over. Okay, so uh, while I think of it, start off by doing the little stems on the... There is... That's... Oh, this one here. Okay, and now for the leaves. Let's start here where we began. I expect you can see that I'm pressing down with a varied amount of pressure, so hard and soft. And then we'll, we will want to use some white for these ones here. And the dots in the centers. And then Petals take shape. Okay, that's, uh, that's one way of doing it. There are others. You can do vertical or parallel lines in the leaves. I quite like that look. But you don't want them all the same, do you? And then basically, we're going to go around the whole thing, just adding shape to the color rather than adding color to the shapes, as you do with a coloring book. We're adding shape to the color.
There's another one here, and leads the roundness around the berries. I'm thinking about Christmas and thinking it would be fun when Christmas is rolling around to use some of these new techniques for the same old, same old icon -ic, iconic. Don't like what I did there, but never mind. Um, images of Christmas, something to make a change. Yeah, I'm quite liking this whole idea of doing the berries back to front like this. So starting with the leaves rather than the flowers and then painting the shadows on the berries before you paint the actual berries. You put the circles in the right places, which I'm learning to do as we go along. It's quite interesting look. more relaxed. Well, you could call them flowers if you want. They could be circular flowers. There are flowers like this, aren't there? I'm sure there are. much more of this to do now. We'll just shape up some of these leaves, keep going until we get to the point of point of no return. Something like that. I'm going to start complaining now that it's too hot. So you can wait for that with bated breath. But the air conditioning is fixed. Thank goodness. In the studio and in the house. That was a disaster. But it's okay now. Everything's fine. I'm not going to outline these ones. They're too, too small. They can stay the way they are. We'll just put some stems in. Uh, um, it's really kind of optional, isn't it, what you do? You don't have to do any of this and certainly don't have to do all of them. And if you prefer the look of following the lines more closely, there's nothing to stop you doing that too. But. Uh, I kind of prefer to keep it really loose. Just like everything else though, you know, there's a lot of personal preference in painting, isn't there? I mean, who's to say what you should and shouldn't do? No one. We're not at school, are we? <coughs> Thank goodness. Okay, I've oh, got one here that needs some big petals. This one needs some lines. Well, I hope everybody is going to uh, enjoy having a go at this one. It's quite fun. I'll just do some 
very, very low key. I'm using some of these designs that we're doing to make um, covers for the um, little notebooks that we have for sale on the website. So if you're interested at all in that, if you go over to um, dianeanton.com and look at the products that we have for sale there, you can find a few books. And in the next few days, there'll be some new ones putting up uh, with designs that we've done here on the channel. I think I'm going to leave it at that, you know. So, uh, yeah, don't forget to give us a like and subscribe and turn on notifications and all the rest of it. And if you feel like becoming a member, you can either join here on YouTube or else you can join Patreon. Uh, starts at 2 dollars for the lowest membership. And then you're entitled, once you've joined either one of those, to belong to our Facebook, our private Facebook group. Um, where we have challenges and things like that going on every day. There's a challenge. Uh, this one has turned out to be a bit of a challenge. There we go. Uh, what was I going to say? Yes, so that's nice if you feel like joining that. Um, and check out the free sketches that we have for everybody, whether you're a member or not, on the website. And as I say, we have a few products over there as well. And uh, don't forget, um, don't forget, what, what don't forget what? <laughs> Comes in, what shouldn't they forget? <laughs> I think I have forgotten to take my coffee this afternoon. So I'll, I'm going to say bye bye and I'll see you again soon. So there we are, one little um, floral fantasy. I'll let you go. See you soon. Bye now.